today, my beloveds. Today I want us to go a bit further than the human mind and what we think physically. Beloveds, we always believe in what we read from the Bible. But today I want us to go a little bit further than this. Just one step. Beloveds, if we read from the Bible, we learn what God expects of us and what our true journey is. But there are some things we read from the Bible that actually causes us to misinterpret and misunderstand the Bible. So today I want to touch one of the, the major topics on how to understand the Bible and what causes us to become confused. When we read from 1 Corinthians 15, beloveds, God teaches us that the natural was before the spiritual. Let us read it. 1 Corinthians 15, and I'm going to read from the 44th verse. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. And so it is written, the first Adam, beloved, how many Adams are there? The first Adam was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. How be it, that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterward which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth, earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven, beloveds. So the first Adam was of the earth. The second Adam was the Lord from heaven. Now we've discussed this in so many videos, beloved. We know that the earth is the understanding. And God will create spiritual understanding out of natural understanding, out of physical understanding. But now, beloveds, I want to take it one step further. The natural was first. We had to have the physical body to be transformed into spiritual understanding beings. But now let's take it one step further. People say that we won't believe anything if it's not written in the Bible. That's why they don't believe in evolution. They believe that God created man about 6,000 to 7,000 years ago. And that was the first human being that was created. Although it totally doesn't make any sense when we look at the creation in the Bible and the tree of, of knowledge, good and evil. What kind of fruit is a tree, knowledge, good and evil, beloved? It's not an apple. That's what the human mind created for us to make sense of it, which totally doesn't make sense. And heaven was formed under the earth, under the, 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 the clouds, and the sun, moon, and stars on the fourth day was created within the, the firmament, which is under the clouds. So it totally doesn't make sense. But we read from 1 Corinthians 15 that God says, Natural was first and then spiritual. Now I want to ask you to start thinking logically, beloveds. Who created us? God created us. Now, it is proven by science and evolution that the world is billions of years old. The earth existed for billions of years. And Evolution did happen. They have physical fossil proof that it did exist. But now I want to return to the question. Did we create God or did God create us? God created us, beloved. But I want to tell you to think now. If we existed first, if the natural was first, how could God have created us? We must have created God, isn't it? Because we were first. So then came the spirit. First the natural. Then came the spirit. So these are things I want us to take into consideration. And start thinking logically. God created us. There's so many places in the Bible where we can read. That before the beginning. The son of David said. I was there before God created the earth. I was there before everything was created, before everything started. 
I was there. In what form was he then, beloved? Everything that existed. The earth is a very young planet. And all the other planets, who created that? God created that. Every living cell that exists, God created. So if God had to create us, physically as well as spiritually, who existed first? What was first? Spirit or the physical body? Of course, God had to be first. So spirit had to be first. The spiritual creation created a physical creation. So it's totally impossible for Adam to have been a physical being. God created us and a path and a journey for us to return to Him, to release the soul to God, to conquer our mind, to be changed and transformed into spiritually thinking beings and for us to take on His image and become one with Him. So that's where we will start, beloveds. Don't say, no, but it's not written in the Bible because there's such little information in the Bible about our natural and physical existence and science that it'll never make sense if you say, no, but it's not written in the Bible. What's written in the Bible is a spiritual path which leads us to God, which teaches us how to free the soul from the mind and become one with our Creator, the source and force that controls us. And that's why it's so important, beloved, to understand where the spirit is from that enters the baby while it's forming inside the mother's womb. We have to understand what Jesus Christ is, what the first Adam is that was transformed into the second Adam, the Lord from heaven. That in itself, beloved, is much more involved and spiritual than the human mind can even ever fathom. That's why there's so many people that they say, no, this is what I believe. Why do you believe that? Because that one told me that. So when somebody tells me something, they believe in something. They believe in a God. They believe that Jesus died for me. They believe there was a physical Jesus. They believe that whatever the, the case may be. They believe in what somebody else told them. So they haven't seen for themselves. I believe in what my other place tells me. I believe in what the preacher told me. What the masters told me. My master told me. What this one told me. What that one told me. If that one is living in a fantasy, I'm living in a double fantasy. Because now I have to get out of my fantasy to see that that guy's in a fantasy. And then I have to seek the truth for myself. And that can make me waste another lifetime. So first of all, I have to find out for myself, clean the slate. What is right? What is wrong? What is true? What makes sense, beloved? Because whatever makes sense is light and understanding. So I have to get away from just taking in everything I hear and accepting what, what I'm told. And that's why the, the, the Christian religion is in the state it is, and really religion as a whole. I believe in Buddha. I believe in Muhammad. I believe in Allah. I believe in Jesus. I believe in God. We, where is this Jesus? Have you ever seen it? Have you ever seen God? Have you ever seen Muhammad? Have you ever seen Allah? No. So, who is this God we serving, beloved? The cloud of witnesses, according to Hebrew, is those who have seen God, Matthew 5 verse 8, those who have become pure of heart will see God. The God is speaking to people according to their understanding. A first grader teacher speaks to the first graders as first graders. And the university professor speaks to the students according to their knowledge and understanding and how far they develop. But what we're doing, because the church is upside down, 
and people don't know the different heavens and don't actually haven't evolved to the level of that office that they can't teach from that heaven that everything is so upside down in the church. When God speaks to us, He speaks to those always read and see who God is speaking to. Because sometimes He speaks to the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the Israelis, the Apostles, whoever. Look at who He's speaking to. Then you will see that we just take everything for granted. God has wrote that in the Bible. Now that's for me. It's not for me. If I don't understand the first grade first. You can't go and sit at university when you're a first grader and attempt to understand what the professor is teaching. You won't understand, beloveds. That's as simple as that. So that's something we have to get into our minds. We have to sit back. Take a step back, beloveds. Beloveds, if you're egoistic and you want to know everything and you just want to be up there with all the others, very few who truly do understand, but those who do understand, if you want to just be up there and think that somebody is going to think little less of you or you're going to belittle yourself, you're missing the kingdom of God. Whatever you learn from the Bible and from our true God, beloved, is to learn how little you know. The more you know, the more you learn, the more you're going to understand how little you know. In the beginning, you will learn something that enlightens you or bring you to a certain level of understanding. And at that level, you will try to convince everybody, including the chickens and the dogs and the cats and everything. You will attempt to, to convince everybody that this is the true part. That's true. That's real. That's, but that's when you start seeing the light. You want to reveal this light to everybody, but you don't even have the potential to do it. And that's why you have to put your entire life into it. Look for the part. Look for the truth. Seek the truth. And then you will see as you grow. No, this is how it is. This is how it is. Why? Because the apostle said that. Why? Because the overseer said that. Why? Because the preacher said this. And this one said that. No. You must see. Faith is something we hope for. Uh, evidence of something we haven't seen. Evidence of something we haven't seen. In other words, we have faith in something we haven't seen. You believe in God? Yes, you, you can't love him. You, you don't know what it is because you have faith in something you haven't seen. Faith is something you have in something you haven't seen, beloved. So the only way that your faith and hope can become whole is to see and fully understand. And that is what it means to see. So you can never become whole until you actually see. And the only way you're going to see is by somebody who takes you to that level and introduce you to, to God. The cloud of witnesses. Witnessed to see God. And it's very really easy to hear something and go tell everybody, Oh, but I've seen God. Have you? Yes. Beloved, you have to break wall down the middle wall of partition. You have to become pure in heart. You have to advance to levels where you see God, the Creator, in the lowest form, not the highest form, beloved. We can't fathom it. We can't fathom this, this Creator because He's too great. But He gives us an entry level at this low level of understanding. Through this gate, the human body, when we conquer the flesh, when we conquer this body, and that body returns to the earth it was taken from. So that's where we start. So what was first? Spirit or natural? Spirit, beloved. Because the spirit created the natural for us to become spiritual. So all I want to achieve with this video is for us to just think one level up. Not to just get stuck at what we told 
And this is how it is. Think, beloved. You are responsible for your own soul. So think for yourself. What is this God? What is above the flesh? What is above us? Who created us? What was there before the earth was formed? What was there before humans existed? Animals. And before animals, there was nothing. The earth was like a, like a, a glowing ball of fire, beloved. It wasn't a sun, but as the astro asteroids and stuff collided with it, it, it was just a melt, molten lava, beloved. And it cooled down. You can see when you cut the earth in half, you'll see that there's only a thin layer around the earth that cooled down. That's why you still have volcanoes. Because the earth is still cooling down in the, in the center. So these are things we have to take into consideration. Let's understand the natural side. Let's understand the spiritual side. And know that, that we, that's where we're from. The natural was first. Even before the physical bodies were avail available, beloved, you were in spirit already. God knew you before you were born. Naturally as well as spiritually. Before the church existed, what existed? Before the light existed, what existed? Darkness. And who made the darkness? God made it. Who made the physical earth? God made it. So what was before the earth? God. So how can the natural be before the spiritual? If we think logically. So that's why I want us to take a step back. Us who make out the members on the body of Christ. Let's be, become enlightened. But let's take a step back first and see we actually don't know as much as we think we do. We just might learn something from our God. God wants us to become children again. Because as Paul said, he said, are you without understanding? You start with the spirit and you end up with the flesh. After all your suffering, because for us to become spiritual, beloved, you have to suffer. You have to go to the cross to conquer the flesh, to become more spiritual. So I just want to share this with you, beloved. Uh, please, if you don't want to, don't accept it. Don't, don't worry about it. Just ignore it. But I just want us to think a bit more about our Creator. And everything isn't just about us. It's about God, beloved. We have to reach that source, that power. And if we can respect that power a bit more, we won't just talk about God as, as if we're talking about a car. This word God, beloved, and our Lord Jesus Christ is much more than our minds can fathom. And if Jesus or God are physical beings, that, that it's humiliating to them. I mean, it's degrading to think that Jesus was a physical being. It's degrading, beloved. Our Jesus Christ is God in flesh. This flesh, it's much higher than we can understand. That's why we really think and confuse ourselves to think that the physical was first and then came the spirit. So let's give God some honor. Let's give Christ some honor. Let's give the body some honor. And let us become spiritual beings as we're supposed to have been. Let's conquer this, this physical way of understanding. Let's conquer this physical flesh. And become spiritual beings and ascend into God consciousness where we can be set free of this hell, beloved. And that's where we're supposed to be. So thank you very much for listening, beloveds. Share with our beloveds if they are advanced to that level where they might understand it. If they don't, don't force it down on anybody, beloveds, because people won't understand it and they will just hate you for it. Of course, they will hate you as soon as you see the light. But be careful who you share it with, beloved. And if you share, make sure to explain to them what, what it means. So we have to get our own house in order first and then help others to get their house in order and uplift them to our level of understanding and consciousness. God bless you, beloved. Thank you very much.